Hi there, and welcome to another interview. Today, I've got the amazing Rachel with me, who you might know as Ribeye Rachel. And I'm going to ask Rachel the same question that I ask absolutely every guest. Hey, Rachel, why did you become carnivore? That's a great question. So I became carnivore because I was very sick. I became very sick when I was about 20 years old. And I was diagnosed with all sorts of different chronic illnesses, including uh Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, dysautonomia, Chiari malformation, gastroparesis, intracranial hypertension, uh, chronic Lyme disease, the list really goes on. That's that's not all of the conditions that I had, but I know it, it can be helpful for people to know what what conditions that, um, that you're healing from. And I went the Western medicine route for years. We went, we traveled the country to see top doctors. I had five neurosurgeries, brain surgeries, and um, I continued to get sicker. I was very, very sick and I was essentially bed bound. I had severe fatigue, severe pain, um, full body pain, severe migraines, severe neck pain, uh, severe just like joint instability and um, was very, very sick with a long list of symptoms and a long list of chronic conditions. And I had tried, you know, medication, surgeries. I'd tried the Western medicine route, but I continued to get sicker. And I started kind of like hearing things of people doing a carnivore diet. And um, I'd always kind of been a bit more on the opposite end of the spectrum. I I didn't eat very much meat. I had kind of a standard American diet. And um, I became interested because I, I told myself, you know, if I'm going to get better, I need to be open-minded and I need to be willing to try anything to get better. And um, I started kind of looking into and researching carnivore because I was worried that I'd get worse if I tried it, but I was interested. And so I just was astounded by the amount of positive stories that I heard when, you know, that, that first reaction usually for people is like, that sounds like a terrible idea, right? And so I I was nervous about trying it, especially being so sick. But eventually I decided, you know, I'm always going to wonder if I don't give this a try. And so I dove right in and I tried carnivore and it was hard at first, especially being really sick. I was, to give you an idea of how sick I was, I wasn't even able to cook my own meals. And so I had, you know, my husband, my parents helping out and, um, you know, I'd say within four, four to six weeks, and I'm, I'm sure maybe you have some more questions about this that we can get into, but I started seeing these small improvements. And so that kind of kept me going. And um, I did a strict carnivore diet for a year and a half. And the past year or so, I've been doing more of an animal-based approach. Um, so about, at this point, I'm about 90 to 95% carnivore. And uh, it's changed my life. It's brought me so much healing. And it's, it's been a big part of my, of my chronic illness healing journey. I went from, from bed bound and essentially dying to I'm now rock climbing. I'm hiking. I'm living a normal life. And uh, it's, it's incredible. It is, it, it is incredible. Um, I deliberately have kept away from your story, and I want everyone to know that the reason I approach Rachel is because people I coach have said she's a real inspiration. So we've, I've had a fair few people mention Rachel, and it was her story that they were following that made them try carnivore. So I suppose there's two big questions from that, Rachel. One is, um, let me ask both of them, and then you can maybe answer them together. How did you actually get so sick in the first place? And who did you see that was inspirational to make you change? That is a good question. And you know, I, it's that you never know exactly what, what got you so sick, but I think to be honest, I think everybody's a ticking time bomb in our, in our society now with, it's not just our diet. There's so many things that are negatively impacting our health. And I think sometimes it just takes that one thing that kind of sets you over the edge to, to send you into full illness and um you know i i grew up fairly healthy but i had i had some issues i was pretty sick in high school as well and um i started having symptoms when i was probably 14 or 15 but i was still pretty functional until about 20 and um 
I would say, you know, it was a combination of high, high carbohydrate and, and processed food diet, um, which I think, you know, I always thought that it didn't matter that much. And I also, I, because everybody else is eating that way, it makes you feel like you're not eating that bad, if that makes sense, because it's so normal. But it really is, it shouldn't be. But um, that in combination with, I think, you know, I was living a high stress lifestyle. I was in college and I wasn't getting much sleep. I was not resting very well. I was the type of person that would, you know, if I got sick, I'd just push through. And so I think that constant level of stress through my nervous system into um, just that survival state that is where disease really starts to happen. And um, yes, I think there are genetic predispositions to having these chronic illnesses and autoimmune diseases, but that disposition um, doesn't mean that healing isn't possible. And so uh, really, yeah, just a combination of of diet, lifestyle, um, just all the modern stressors that our bodies are enduring. It just, you know, I think everybody if we're not doing, taking action to improve our health and our nervous system health, like everybody's kind of a ticking time bomb. And and that even if you don't have symptoms and think that you're healthy, like the the, the disease process starts well before, you know, you got sick. And, um, and so that's, that's my best guess for why I got sick. It doesn't matter to me so much anymore i'm just like I, I know i can get better that's what really matters but uh that is a common question that i get <laughs> why did you get so sick and um it, you know i think it's just a combination of things and and for me i think potentially that trigger like that threw me over the edge into you know full-blown severe chronic illness was um a chronic infection and so i think that was kind of the trigger you know i was diagnosed with chronic lyme disease and um I have, I have my own thoughts on that. Um, but I, you know, I think maybe that was what, what sent me over the edge, but of course there are lots of factors when it comes to that. So. So who was it that sort of inspired you? Was it, was there two, three people? Was it uh, friends, family to try the carnivore diet? Yeah. So, you know, what's interesting, I think a lot of people have the same story where they hear about it like years before they actually start it. But the first I ever heard about it was Michaela Peterson. So my brother-in-law brought it up and at this time I was really sick and he just said, Hey, you know, like I, I heard that Michaela Peterson, you know, she had arthritis and she did this beef diet and now it's in remission. And I thought, wow, that's great for her, but I don't have arthritis. And so it just, it, I'm guessing that doesn't apply to me. And I, I kind of thought like without doing any research or looking into it further that you know, that was a very unique situation for her and that it wouldn't apply to my own chronic illnesses. And so I didn't look into it further at that point. And, um, and then I, I honestly, I was on a Facebook group and I saw somebody with chronic Lyme disease say, I did the carnivore diet and all my chronic pain went away. And I was like, what? That's crazy. And so then I, I, you know, did a a YouTube search and that was when I really watched Michaela Peterson's story. And, and I just, from there, um, Ken Berry was a, a really big inspiration for me. Um, in a way, I, I I feel like what he shared kind of was a part of, of like saving my life. Um, and so I, I'm really, really grateful to him. And I actually was able to meet him at KetoCon last year. Um, and I just watched his videos um, from bed. And uh, that's kind of what inspired me to to start and it was hard for me um and I'm sure some people can relate to this but like I was severely underweight at the time and I saw all these videos of like I did carnivore to lose 50 pounds or whatever which is great but that wasn't what I was needing and I wasn't really finding that many people with my specific chronic illnesses that had seen or had done the carnivore diet the few that i found saw positive results so that really helps but um one of the big reasons why i share my story is because i want to encourage people that are going through similar things and say hey look like there is hope for healing and there's hope for um for having a better life and um so yeah 
So I can give you a tick for that because that's definitely happened. Because like I say, I've had, I mean, this isn't a humble brag. I've had about a thousand clients since I've been coaching and about 500 since Carnivore. Probably 5% have mentioned you, you know, which is a big chunk. You know, I'm just, and I'm in the UK, so, you know, I, I, your name kept coming up. Very similar to how when I talk to people, they mention Ken Berry and Makeda Peterson. That's why I had that wry smile because I was thinking, wow, this sounds like a sort of Makeda Peterson type story. Now, I'm going to pick you up on one thing you said. I don't know if it was sort of rhetoric or, or, or literally true. You, you said you felt like you were dying. Do you really feel that you were close to dying? Yeah. So um, honestly, I for well over a year at my worst, every single day I felt like I was having symptoms of an emergency and, you know, we'd go to the ER and they wouldn't be able to help me. And so it was like living in this constant state of emergency where like nobody was able to help. And it was scary. And it was, you know, the hardest thing I've ever been through. But I, like, I was, wait, I was wait, withering away, quite literally. I have gained 50 pounds since my lowest weight. And um, that's, you know, I don't look like I have 50 pounds to lose. So um, it's... You know, I I was close to needing a feeding tube. I was barely able to eat at all. I was, you know, I needed help. It wasn't safe for me to be alone because I was having, you know, episodes of non-epileptic seizures. I was, um, it, it was hell. And I really honestly feel that if I continued down the Western medicine route, I don't know that I would be alive today. And that is, that is a crazy thought. Um, but it also makes me so grateful for what I've learned and and the healing that I've seen um, because it's it's a testament to how our bodies have an innate ability to heal. And that's one of the biggest messages that I want to share is that our bodies were designed to heal. And um, it's it's amazing. And I, I've heard stories of people that were sicker than I was that are recovering. And it, it, I just, nothing makes me happier than to hear that people are healing from severe chronic illness because I know what it's like to be there and it is um it's an unbearable way to live and uh I just I just want to share that message that like there's and um and hope is is everything yeah your your testament to that definitely and uh, I I have been in that situation briefly twice in my life only for a moment you know so once uh, after exercise where I pushed myself too hard and fainted and ended up with ambulance men around me and wrapped up in silver foil and hyperventilating and my heart going and not not recovering which was pretty scary in my 20s when I thought I knew a lot about sport and um when I was 49 and I was uh, having a lower left quadrant pain and colonoscopy, I'd lost my mum to colon cancer, you know, very young. And I thought, here we go again. This is going to be me. So I can't, and they, they were horrific moments. I can't imagine day to day feeling like that. So Rachel, I take my hat off to you to be able to do what you did to get through and, and talk about it like this. So sort of positively, because you're right, it is about hope. And I, get quite a few comments that annoy me on my youtube where oh this is rubbish it's, it's bs they're just making up and i always i always reply because i think they're taking hope away from people and i always correct them and say look everyone i speak to is genuine lots of them send me pictures i wouldn't even put on the channel because they're distressing depressing and my channel isn't about that but it is about being real um one thing i loved what you said it's strange things to start it like that, but you said that you were so sick you couldn't even cook, so your husband and your parents did it. Now, that is that is real support. Um, during that point, did your husband or your parents ever say, you shouldn't be doing this because this is a wacky diet, or did they see the difference and, and join in sort of thing? You know, honestly, I, I am very blessed in that my family was very supportive of me, and my dad actually tried the carnivore diet with me um, at the time my husband and I were living with my parents because we needed that help and my husband needed to work and I couldn't be alone so we moved in with my parents and um, my dad did the carnivore diet with me in the beginning and um, he also saw positive results from it but yeah my family was very supportive and um, of course you know we all had our like kind of we were nervous about it and stuff but they really just wanted 
to do anything to help me get better. And um, I know not everybody has that situation at home. And so I, I was really blessed in that way. But um, yeah, I, my husband has never gone full carnivore, but he eats a lot more meat now and, and he feels much better that way, much healthier. And um, and so it's it's been really good. And um, especially as I started to get better, I think, you know, my family and my friends, they knew that like if they came visit me, I'd be either laying on the couch or in bed and um, often couldn't talk for very long. And so like seeing that real change in me really caused them to be curious about what I was doing. And um, honestly, people have been very receptive to it and very supportive, even if, you know, they may not agree or think it's a good idea. Like most people in my life have been really happy for me. And, um, and so I, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. And, and most people are happy for you. And I think that that's great. Um, now your name online was, uh, Ribeye Rage. So that sort of gives me a clue. What, what, what were you eating when you first started carnivore? What, what was a day of eating like? Well, when I started carnivore, I did not know what a ribeye was. Um, so that that gives you an idea of I, I was not a meat eater um very much so before I started I ate a lot of ground beef because that was you know what was most affordable I did have steaks here and there um but something I noticed that I really loved was cuts like chuck roast that were full of connective tissue and so one of the conditions that I was diagnosed with is called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome which is a connective tissue disorder that's said to be genetic and incurable, which I don't really believe. But um, anyway, I craved cuts that had connective tissue like chuck roast, oxtail, uh, you know, those off cuts where you kind of slow cook them and uh, or pressure cook them. And I could eat a whole chuck roast like in one sitting, at, you know, at like six months of doing carnivore. That's what I was really craving. And um I did do a, a strict lion diet for about eight months, I think. And so um, that I, you know, I just mostly ate beef. And eventually I started kind of getting into like the low histamine meats that helped with um, reactions for me. It's not something I need to do anymore, though. Um, and then, yeah, I just um, I, I started with conventional meats, uh, just grocery store, whatever was cheapest. And I did see a lot of progress with that, but I, I did see a difference when I switched to um, kind of higher quality pasture raised meats. Um, and so, uh, you know, I always say just eat the best you can afford because like so many people can heal with, with conventional meats and um, it's still really, really good quality food. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I, and that ribeye is more like a treat for me. Um, it's, you know, I, there are some carnivores, you know, like Sean Baker who kind of eat like ribeye for every meal or whatever. And that's great. But I, I, it's more of a treat for me. I, it's just a fun name because it kind of became like my favorite state, my favorite treat, but I'm not eating ribeye every day. <laughs> no. And I'm, I laughed at that ribeye statement because I was 55 when I became carnivore and that was the first time I'd heard of ribeye. So oh, yeah. I got to 55 and never heard of it. So that, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. And I, I love the fact you're so honest about everything. Um, now, it sounded like you needed to gain weight. So I'm assuming you didn't incorporate any sort of therapeutic fasting. You were just eating every day. Is that correct? Yeah. So in the beginning, my strategy really was to just eat as much as I could. And to be honest, I felt like I was force feeding myself. And, and at the time, like, the transition, like, it wasn't very easy. I think a lot of people think, you know, results are just going to come, like, right away. And and that may happen for some people, but others, you know, it can be a hard transition. But um, I, yeah, the strategy was just to try to eat as much as I possibly could. I was focused on red meat being my main source of nutrition. Um, I'd have a little bit of chicken here and there in the beginning, but um yeah, I, you know, sometimes I would eat like four times a day or whatever, like, cause I was just, it, I, I was struggling conditioning or, or struggling with a condition called gastroparesis where I, um, my digestive system wasn't working properly. And so like, you know, I could feel full after a couple of bites and 
Um, so that was something that really improved with time as well. But um, I, yeah, I don't know if that's the best strategy, but it ended up working for me in the end. And uh, I'm really glad that I pushed through it because, uh, yeah, it changed my life. So. Cool. Thank you. A um, couple of other simple questions. If I don't ask them, I get told off. Uh, do you include fish in your diet and dairy? I do. Yeah. So for a time there when I was doing the lion diet for about that eight months, I did not. But I do. I have uh, I do have seafood. Not as much as I would like. It. You know, I don't have really like a good look source um, and I would want it to be high quality if possible. Um, and I do raw dairy um and butter i i do actually drink raw milk um that i've done well with that um and yeah i, I have eggs as that's excellent um so you didn't need to fast at, at all uh you said recently you wouldn't call yourself completely carnival um yeah. what made that change happen yeah, I, I, I guess I kind of came to a point where I felt like, I don't know, I'm someone that kind of goes with intuition. And when I started Carnivore, I knew it was the right thing for me. And I I just was all in and uh, always watching all the Carnivore podcasts, always um, very passionate about it. And it, I felt like it became a little bit like a part of my identity in a way. But um, I felt like, you know, there are some things where I was still kind of struggling with digesting so much meat and... Um, you know, of course, there are a million ways to do carnivore, and and maybe I wasn't doing it in the best way, but I I felt like I I needed something else, and I um had had some labs done, and I was very low in vitamin C, and I was very low in folate, and I incorporated some berries and some honey, and always making sure to prioritize my animal protein at that first, make sure my blood sugars were stable, and um. And that helped a lot. So after a couple of months of doing like a more animal based approach, you know, my vitamin C levels had returned to normal. Um, I also felt like I was having histamine reactions and, and that vitamin C um, seemed to help with that because um, those are pretty closely related. And uh, so that's something I think, you know, I'd love to see being talked about more in the carnivore community is vitamin C because I think that we're so quick to brush that off. Whereas um, I think there are people who are, really do need more vitamin C than they're getting from the carnivore diet because it can be really important for immune health. And like for me, somebody healing from a connective tissue disorder, it's important for collagen synthesis. And so just like recognizing that um, it's okay to experiment with other things like that for me, it was, it was helpful and um, it's kind of what I've, I've stuck with. And, you know, will I go back to strict carnivore again one day? Maybe. I don't know. Um, we'll see. But one thing I know is that um, prioritizing that animal protein and fat is is where I feel best. And so, um, and, and it's been nice too. I think it's a good sign of healing to be able to try other. And that's my, it's kind of my rule is I'm willing to try it if it doesn't have refined sugars, if it doesn't have uh, seed oils and I try to keep things from a good source um, and, and prepared right. And so I'm, I've tried things like, you know, rice or um, other grains a little bit here and there. It's not something I have a lot, but I don't react to it. And um, so it's, you know, not all people want that or need that, but I think that, you know, it's, it's, not necessarily a good sign if you have a bite of a strawberry and you, all of a sudden your like joints are swelling up like it's I think there's you know probably some nervous system healing that needs to take place if you're having a strong reaction to a whole food that isn't meat um but of course you know I just want to be the best whatever diet that is so it sounds like you really got into the nitty gritty and the physiology and the science of it, which is a, a real common thing, I think, within this community. And I did pick up, you mentioned that you've got Lyme disease or had chronic Lyme disease. Are, are you completely over that? And you also said, maybe we'll get back to that as if you've got something you want to say. So I'd be... Yeah, right. So I, I've got some strong opinions on Lyme disease. 
So I treated for Lyme disease before I started carnivore for about a year and a half. And they brought me very slow improvements, but it was a brutal treatment. Like I was having, I was getting hives all over my body every day. I was um, having these crazy neurological reactions. Um, it was rough. And I, if I were to do it again, I I would not do that treatment. And I don't think that Lyme disease treatment is necessarily the best approach to healing from chronic Lyme disease. Yes, I believe Lyme disease is real. Um, obviously, like it's something I experienced and went through. But my personal belief on Lyme disease is that it's not really the Lyme that is what is the problem. It's your body's capacity to handle that stressor. So our bodies have an innate ability to clear infection if your nervous system is capable of handling that stressor. So that's a, a reason why so many people today that are completely healthy will test positive for a, a Lyme disease bacteria in their blood because um, and not be sick. And then, so it's like, well, why is this making some people really sick and others not? And my belief is that when your nervous system is dysregulated and you're stuck in a chronic survival state, your immune system is impaired. Every system of your body is impaired when your nervous system isn't functioning properly and when you're in that chronic survival state. And so my belief is that if you give the body uh, or if you give, given the right conditions, the body should be able to clear infection and clear toxins on its own because that's what it was designed to do. And so that's something that I, I stopped treating for. And um, I think something also really worth noting is that I, another huge part of my healing was working on healing my nervous system. So I would say it's, it's just, it was just as important as changing my diet, if not maybe more. And so I, I started with a brain retraining program where I spent an hour a day visualizing myself healthy and strong. And so I would verbally like speak these visualizations where I was healthy and doing all these things that I wasn't yet able to do again. And um, did all sorts of things like more sunlight, working on circadian rhythm and, you know, letting go of limiting beliefs. And that was so important for my healing because I think if, if we're still stuck in that chronic fight or flight state, even eating the perfect diet isn't going to be enough to heal. And um, so I think that's kind of the missing piece for a lot of people. If if this if a certain diet, whether it's carnivore, you know, isn't working quite right, then I think that's a huge missing piece because um, in order for our, our digestion to work and our body to be able to absorb those nutrients, we need to be in a predominantly like parasympathetic state with our nervous system. I don't know how familiar you are with the nervous system, but. Uh, that's something that I've gotten really into and I think is is very, very important um, for healing from chronic illness as well. And um, so, yeah, when I started to believe that I could recover, that was a turning point for me. And um, I think sometimes we get a little bit too hyper-focused on healing our health and our diet and all these things. And um, sometimes you kind of just got to like live your life and um, there's value in that. And there's, there's so much, um, feeling to be found in things other than diet too so yeah that that's brilliant um yeah you don't know my background i, I have a, an honors degree in um physiology and health sciences and i specialized in the descending and ascending pathways of pain so yeah i definitely know what you're talking about in the neurological side of things but one of the other things that you said and and i've really heard this mentioned the other thing i have a few strings to my bow and i'm also as an as an advanced personal trainer, I train some people in the Olympics. And visualization in sport is huge, absolutely huge. And it shouldn't be underestimated that you start to think yourself better. It, it can help. Um, and it just it's just one of the things, yeah. And virtually every athlete that's successful, I think, at some point will say, yeah, I did a, a bit of visualization, whatever that might be, visualizing myself jumping over that height or the winning line having done that time and I, I really do think putting yourself into where you're going to be definitely helps yeah. you because the reverse is definitely true because if, if someone's worrying and, and, and chronically stressed and always saying oh I can't I, I'm dreading such and such 
if you're a friend, you'd say you really need to just take a step back because you're talking yourself into into a nightmare there. It hasn't even arrived yet. And you you try to undo all that stress. And finally, that I mean, that was a lovely bit there with the fight or flight. I always say to people, there's fight, flight and freeze, actually. You know, and that's when the anxiety kicks in because which is you know a proper response because it's saying come on make a decision and if you can't make a decision you just get more anxious but anyway that was Rachel that was brilliant I really really enjoyed that and um I um I, I just I'm so glad you said yes to this and I know you know um it's taken a while to get this together but I hope the people that asked me to get you on are able to see this because um, I think it'll make them so happy but also new people will be so inspired I loved what you said about the Lyme disease I'm very interested in that uh, it's come up quite a few times recently and I need to know a lot more so uh, I, maybe in six months we can have a catch up and you can tell me how you're getting on so yeah thanks for coming on it was brilliant thanks so much for having me I appreciate it Thank you very much.